What up boys and welcome back to yet another Dragonflight video. So in today's video we're discussing the death of Dragonflight gold farming because I'm getting so many questions about it daily. I wanted to make this video to share my opinion on it. Before we do so though, big thank you to every single one of you guys that has subscribed to the YouTube channel. I mean just reaching 100,000 YouTube subs as a purely gold farming YouTube channel to me is absolutely insane. So as promised, we're doing 5 million gold giveaway. Because we reach 100,000 YouTube subs, we're also doing another 5 million gold in giveaway once we reach 110k subs. So make sure to subscribe. And because we reach 100k, you guys can now uh, participate in the big sale on the 0 to 10 million gold guide, where Johnny Boy is giving you the gold guide for only $9.90. So for the price of less than a WoW token, or less than a, a month of game time, you guys will receive the complete gold guide that features all of the best tactics and methods that I personally use in order to achieve multiple gold caps. The best part about it is the fact that you buy it once and you will have a lifetime of free updates. So whenever there's a new patch or a new expansion, I'm going to update the book and send that updated version directly to your email as soon as I update it. So Big thank you to everyone that has bought it during the sale. The support has been absolutely massive. I really do appreciate it. So make sure to grab it before it's gone. Link down below. Now, the death of Dragonflight gold farming. I mean, if a lot of people are asking me this because they used to make over 100,000 gold an hour. It was easy. It sold instantly. And now, like roughly... Um, what is it, like roughly a week ago or so, the price is just absolutely tanked, right? Uh, like everything tanked in value. Glowing Titan Orb got a nerf, so they tanked. All the Awakened just tanked in value. All the different meats needed for uh, the Seeker mounts tanked. Like all the cloth tanked. It all just went down in value. And we always knew that at some point in the expansion... You have to go back to the old content to get like the the good gold power. Every single expansion is exactly the same way. When BFA came out, you could make a lot of gold doing BFA farms, but then due to supply and demand, uh, eventually going back to old content can give you a, a better gold per hour. And the same thing happened in like Legion and Shadowlands, like every expansion exactly the same. Now, I wish that it was that it wouldn't be this way because like in Shadowlands, Shadowlands was a great expansion to make gold in the beginning. It was a lot of fun. But eventually you had to go back to the old content and you were stuck in the old content for like uh, over a year. There was just no point doing any Shadowlands farms because the farms in the old content would just make more gold. Uh, and I'm not talking about gold making, that's different, like being able to craft and make profit and all of that, that's probably going to be viable throughout the entire expansion, because you have new patches, bring in uh, higher item levels, new patterns, new plans, people are leveling out, and so on, but I'm talking from a farming perspective, and obviously if it was up to me, I would want Blister to uh, just constantly find new use for uh, every single material in the game, like all of the Awakens, then maybe there should be uh, like a time-gated upgrade on certain items so that each week people will need the even more Awaken for each week that passes on. You know, something like that. It will be absolutely sweet. I mean, hopefully Blizzard will do frequent uh, big enough patches that introduces new zones that will give you new materials, new plants, new patterns. Kind of like you saw Seraph Mortis. Seraph Mortis in Shadowlands is a great example on how to keep the current content alive because the the expansion or the patch just brought so many current content gold farmers back on the map and you would finally it would be worth it uh, to do current content over old content like by far right uh, as it is right now and the reason why people are asking is because like if you're going to be uh, like honest to yourself, the average gold per hour that you, that you can make in a group is around like 50, 60,000 gold, right? That's what you usually get. You farm the flash frozen meat, you get like roughly 300 of those. That's like 45,000 gold an hour with the current prices. You get some raw gold, you get some cloth, and you end up making like 60k. Uh, if you do one of the popular cloth farms and you have tailoring and chanting, you're going to get some resonant crystals unless you're extremely unlucky. You get a lot of cloth. You get like 16, 17,000 gold raw on the dragonkins. And depending on your RNG on the epic crystals, you can make like 50, 60,000 gold, right? So 
I still think 50, 60,000 gold when everything sells like this is still worth doing over the old content. But uh, if you're solo, there's going to be, uh, it's going to be like Herb and Binding. Otherwise, you're better off doing old content. And it won't be long until uh, you, like old content farms are way better than current content. We're already starting to see the shift because... Uh, like, I'll show you guys some examples, like a very popular old content farm, uh, to, like even in Dragonflight pre-patch, was the uh, the Cloud Serpent, right? The Elani Mount. They're now sitting at like 50,000 gold, and no, it's not just my realm. Look at the uh, market value, the region market value. 50,000 gold is a realistic price for this mount right now, and it's not uncommon to get one of these mounts an hour. Now... If you uh, also include the Spirit of Harmony and the raw gold you get, which will get like 10, 15,000 gold, we're looking at like 65,000 gold now or farming the Cloud Serpent, right? And then if you look at uh, some solo farms, for instance, you have the different dice that you can pickpocket. Now, the easiest dice to obtain, the Warren Troll dice, which you can get multiple of an hour, is 30,000 gold, right? Uh, Lodish Gnomish, Gnomish Dice also 30,000 gold. Dwarven Dice 80,000 gold right now. It's just because no one is farming this anymore. Everyone is busy doing Dragonflight stuff. Uh, and there's a lot more people playing right now because well, guess what? Dragonflight is a really good expansion. So there's a lot more potential buyer of these items. Uh, and then you also have like the, uh, the, the polymorph stuff. Right, like some tomb of polymorphs, like you have the poly uh, bear cub and the porcupine. Like they're doing really well right now in EU and US. So there's a lot of gold to be made on this. And by the way, all of this stuff is in the gold guide. So if you have the gold guide, it's worth just skimming through the old content section and seeing if there's something that really stands out on your realm. Now, if we're talking about big boy RNG farms, like for instance, Selita's farming for transport has always been very popular, but people kind of stopped doing it because the prices went down to the point where you'd be like, nah, it's not worth doing. Uh, but if you look at the prices right now, like these glorious legs, as you can see, I sold them for 12,000 gold. I've only also sold them for way less than that. They have now an increased market value of 141%, up to 60,000 gold in the region. That's one of the items you can get. You can also get the... Uh, the, the skull flame shield, right? Skull flame shield, five hundred thousand gold. I sold one for one hundred and twenty-one k on my realm. It's, it's a full pop giga full pop realm, uh, and now they're like almost half a million gold, and it just keeps on going like that. Like blade of Hannah, blade of Hannah, three hundred thousand gold. Still a very good item. You can do like wad transmog and farm for the uh, the black rock bulwark, and even if you spend the ten hours farming for this shield once you get it that's still eighty-six thousand gold an hour on this item alone and the list for like old content farms just keeps on going like this the only thing that really seems to be holding back is some materials however i've made a shit ton of gold on my uh, stockpile of old materials as well because it's very easy to just pay attention to the prices and post whenever they're high because they will get knocked down really fast because there's so many people with stockpiles but as long as you spend some time and you just monitor the prices of old materials, you can sell it for a lot of gold. But I wouldn't go out at, out of my way and farm old materials just yet. Uh, because the collectible items like toys and uh, and the transmog and the mounts and everything like that. Even battle pets that has an increase in price right now. Like all of those items uh, are selling for a premium right now. So... Uh, yes, my whole opinion on it is that, yeah, Dragonflight uh, gold per hour is definitely going down, but that was as predicted, though. Uh, like, considering the fact that we now have the first expansion with the regional auction house, I honestly expected the prices to drop faster. I just hope that Blizzard does a good enough job with the up-and-coming uh, patches, we're talking about the big patches for new seasons, to bring in uh, new use for the materials. Because if you look at old expansions like TBC and Wrath of the Lich King, for instance, each big patch that they uh, they gave out with a new raid and the new dungeons and so on, they just they still had items that needed materials that was available and needed at the start of the expansion. So you would always it would always be relevant to farm the uh, the materials. And I just hopefully Blizzard does something like that or bring in new materials as well together with obviously they will 
bring in new plans and patterns because they're really proud of their profession system as they should be. So yeah, that's my whole um, that's my whole thought on it. Uh, I will slowly move back into doing uh, old content. Um, like I made some videos on 1005 with a lot of potential. I mean, I sold for like 3 million gold in a couple of days in preparations of the Mage Tower. And the Mage Tower is not even out yet. And I've done like a lot of investments like this one, uh, which will be out in videos uh, eventually. But if you guys want to get a sneak peek on the investments that me and uh, the boys are doing and see all the YouTube videos before anyone else, you can consider signing up to the VIP Discord, which is pretty much like a Patreon. But everything happens on Discord. You sign up. You get like a unique invite code uh, to give you access. And on that Discord, I upload all of my YouTube videos before they go live on YouTube. And we also uh, discuss and I talk about what investments I'm doing for the future patches. And uh, we just discuss trending markets and so on. So if that's interesting for you, you can find that together with the, uh, the gold guide listed down below. But that was pretty much it for today's video. So thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you all back in at the next one. But until then. Bye-bye.